controlled versus uncontrolled components within React. So we're going to first talk about what that even means, and then we're going to get into what it looks like, and then some benefits of using controlled components over uncontrolled and why you might use those in the first place. So first off, what does it mean for something to be controlled? Well, what we're kind of talking about here is whether you, the programmer, are managing the value within some element. So if you had an input element, are you, the programmer, managing the value within that element? Or are you just allowing the default behavior of the browser to occur? Are you allowing that value to be controlled by the browser? So it would be considered controlled if the developer is managing that value and uncontrolled if you're just allowing the browser manage that value through its default behavior. So what does this actually look like in practice? Well, I first want to show you an example of what an uncontrolled component looks like. So here I'm running my React app right now, and I will show you the browser here in a sec, but I'm running my React app and I basically just have a label in an input here in which in my input, I am not setting the value of my input. So I don't have an attribute here that says value equals some value. I am just letting the browser manage whatever value is within my input here. And then all I'm doing here is when a change event occurs for this input, I'm just console logging the event. And the reason I'm doing this is because I just want to show you that the input here is still going to have a value assigned to it. But as you can see, I'm not managing that value of this input. We're just letting the browser do it. So if I go to my browser here, you're going to see that I just have a very nicely styled input with a label of full name. And I have my console open here and we're going to see what gets logged out to my console when an on change event occurs. So if I type my name here, we get we can see a bunch of on change events. And if I open up one of these and I look at the target right here, and the target of a change event is going to be the element in which that event occurred. And I look at the value of this event, you can see that it's the string Ryan Solomon. So we can see here that my input still has the value of Ryan Solomon, even though I'm not setting that within my React component. So in this situation, this input would be considered uncontrolled. We are just letting the browser manage this value with its default behavior. All right. And this isn't necessarily inherently bad. Like people have been doing this with web pages for a very long time and just letting the browser kind of manage these inputs. But that's what we're talking about with an uncontrolled component. Now, what would this look like if we turn this into a controlled component? So if I go down here, I have the very same example, but I make this a controlled component. And to do that, all I need to do is manage the state within my React component or manage that value within my React component. So here I initialize some state, I have full name and set full name, and I assign that to the return value of use state, and I initialize it to just an empty string. And then down here with my input, all I need to do is set a value attribute of my input, and then that value is going to be my full name state, or the state that I've initialized within React. So this is me managing this value within this React component. So this would be considered controlled because I'm managing this value. I'm going to set this value on an on change event. So I'm going to get that event and I'm going to set my full name to the target dot value on every change event. And then I'm going to just kind of manually inject that value within my input, making this a controlled input. So if I go back to my browser here, you're going to see that I get the very same result here in which... I type in Ryan Solomon, and then if I go back to my app here and I just council log my full name value, you're going to see that I'm going to get the very same thing in which I get Ryan Solomon here. So I'm setting that value within React, and then let me also council log out the event, and you're going to see that my input is still going to have the target dot value of Ryan Solo right now. So if I look at the target and I look at the value, you're going to see that I'm still setting that value here on the input, but I'm just managing this value within my React component. And as you can see, my React state is the same thing as the value of this input. So this is me just managing that input. So this would be a controlled component here. Now, what, what's the benefit of doing this? You can see that we get the same result both ways. 
why would I want to do a controlled component over an uncontrolled component? Well, there's a few benefits of this. So one of the benefits is that you can do instant validation and enforce formats on these inputs. So, you know, as I'm typing in my input here, it might be a little bit easier for me to, you know, check some validation. So a certain length of the input or certain values within the input that it needs to be. Or let's say I'm typing in a phone number and I want to make sure that it is formatted in a certain way. So maybe it has dashes after the area code and different things like that. Well, that might be a little bit easier for me to manage within just React state here. And when I have control over that input. Additionally, I think one big benefit here is it kind of makes React the single source of truth of the, the data within your application. You're not kind of going back and forth between, okay, well, with this input, we, we get the value just from the browser and we let the browser manage this value. But for this input, we thought it was best to manage this value within React. I think it makes it a lot easier to just have one single source of truth in which, okay, the way that we manage our inputs within our application is a way in which that's controlled and we just manage those values within our component. And then it also can give you some more flexibility when using the input values. So this kind of comes back to enforcing formats and validation and stuff like that. And this is by no means all the benefits of using controlled inputs. It's just to kind of get you thinking of some different things that might be easier to do if they are controlled. So the difference between a controlled and uncontrolled component within React is a controlled component is in which you manage the value of that component within some React state. Whereas with an uncontrolled, you allow the browser to manage that value with it, just its default behavior. And the way that a controlled component would work is for some element here. So for this input element, I would set a value attribute on this element and this value attribute, I would tie it to some React state. So I'm controlling this state and just injecting the value of this input. So I, the developer, am controlling the value of this input. And then on some change event here, I can set my state, and that is also going to inject that new state into my input. So that would be me controlling this input and creating a controlled component. And then some benefits of these control components you might have some more flexibility when it comes to validation and enforcing different formats. And you also have just kind of one single source of truth within your React applications of the different values and data within your apps, which might make things a little bit easier to reason about and a little bit more kind of maintainable and scalable over the long run. So I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you in that next one.